Hey guys, what is up? Got a new video for you here. Uh, showing some projects I've been working on here on and on for the last couple months now. Um, a couple, well, one of these is mine. These two here are for uh, different people going out. Uh, these two, all this stuff in the back is will be uh, some customer locomotives I'll be doing later, but you'll see these in another video when they're all completed. Uh, but those are all basically uh, early CSX stuff. And they're going to the same guy that I did the first locomotive here for. But we're going to start with my locomotive first to get started. Um, this is an Athern Genesis Union Pacific uh, ES44AC. And as you know, I think in my opinion, Athern makes some of the nicest looking Jeevos uh, because of the high level of detail. Um, but I picked this one up, I think, on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. I got this for a really good deal. I think like $110, $120, uh, pretty cheap. Uh, for these, considering that the standard DC ones usually go for 180, 160 up to $190. Um, but basically with this one, um, I faded it down and did all the weathering on it based off of the photos. Uh, as you guys know with the locomotives that I do, I, I always like to use photo reference. It's uh, freight cars you can get away with some stuff. Locomotives, I think you really have to be precise with these. Uh, since almost all the locomotives they make these days, they're, you know, any locomotive that I buy these days, they're modern locomotives and they're based on, you know, real engines that are out there somewhere. And so there's usually plenty of photos these days of locomotives like these out and about. So you really try, I really try to be, you know, accurate with the weathering that I do on these modern locomotives. But basically, the detail was I didn't have to do too much with it since it's a Genesis locomotive. The only things I did do was add the sill striping to it, uh, which is the reflective tape that I like to use, as you guys know. So the whole side sills and everything like that are wrapped in this. And then once I did that... I just proceeded to airbrush fade the entire model down uh, to really tone down the bright yellow and the gray to really, like I said, get rid of that bright, shiny color and really fade it down, like I said, uh, to prototype photos. Once I was happy with that, I did some uh, interesting little effects on the roof here where I took some acrylic paint, blotched it on here and there, I clear coated everything and then started doing some paint chipping effects by taking a q-tip dipped in alcohol and scrubbing at the paint to get these little uh, worn areas uh, where the primer's showing and the faded gray is bleeding through. Uh, some really neat little effects though. A little bit of exhausted on the roof there but not too crazy. Uh, got the darkened grills on the roof and on the sides here. Very important to do on these of course. The faded flag is all done up. You can see there's a little rust starting to work down on the doors. And all the grime work and everything is done on the sills, on the walkways, on the trucks especially you can see. Very nice. Uh, weathered the wheel faces and all that. And then you got all the grime on the fuel tank including all the oil, grease, uh, fuel spill, all the drippings running down the fuel tank there. A little bit of uh, something from a little effect of something brushing up against the fuel tank, scraping off some of the grime there too. Neat little effect. Uh, but just basically the whole nine yards on this guy here. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then on the roof here, I got a PTC antenna upgrade added to this. Uh, this is an Athern Genesis part, not the 3D part that I used on this uh, guy here. Uh, so I just painted all the details, assembled it, and then put it on the model. And you can see it's uh, relatively fresh and clean, uh, just like the real PTC unit is on the model, or on, on the real unit. You can see the paint chipping effects on the, the cab roof here. Some really nice rust embedded into some of that paint chipping as well, and even on the nose here too. Really nice effect, as you guys can see. Got all the nice details on the front all weathered up and everything else. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, on this side, it's pretty much the same. If I can get it to stay in place, there we go. You guys can see all the spray running up on the side. You guys can see the relatively clean replacement AC unit cabinet boxes here. And then all the grime running up onto the sill there and some rust streaks on the uh, uh, reflective striping. All the truck, all the weathering on the fuel tank is done up there. You guys can see that. Looks very nice, very convincing. Dark and grills, like I said. The faded flag, very important. Uh, and then all this, all the grime on the uh, AC unit here. Uh, but a very, very nicely weathered model here. And the cab roof, and like I said, all of the work on the roof is just really where the, the, the work went into. It's just a lot of a lot of time in doing that scrubbing effect, the paint chipping effects on the roof there. But it all looks pretty good. And then of course the detailing on the back is all done. The only thing I did on the back here is replace the MU jumper uh, with one of my own parts, as you can see, and then just weathered that. Uh, but it looks really nice. I'm really happy with it. It's a nice modern Union Pacific Jeevo. Uh, ready to go into service here. 
Uh, I'm just going to have to install DCC on it. That's one of the things I've been putting off on a lot of my models actually is just installing the DCC. i got to stock up on more decoders. i got a few that I can go ahead and start putting into some of these, but it's just a matter of uh, which units are the priority right now and which ones are still uh, I'm still debating on going back and doing more work to. Uh, but this one here I think for the most part is ready to go for DCC, so I'll have to pop it open and pop that in when I get the chance. Uh, the ACE here, uh, the CSX 4850 now, this one is done for a customer um, who I got some cars off of. Um, so basically what I wanted here was the uh, high-end weathering treatment. So I went ahead and did all that. Um, I faded it down, did all the paint chipping effects like the real 4850 has all over the hood here and all over the railings. Um, it's uh, pretty heavily bleached too. That bright, that dark blue really fades down on these pretty badly. Of course, I darkened the grills. All the grime work is done on the trucks, painted wheel faces. Um, I added the reflective striping to this locomotive as well. Uh, so that's a nice little touch. Um, I added the GPS dome and some other little details here and there, but nothing too crazy. Like I said, the Genesis models are pretty nicely detailed out of the box, but you can see all the. Uh, if I can get some better lighting here, I apologize. The lighting is not too great here right now. You can see the grime work on the, the front pilot there and all that just streaking up all over the uh, front sill there and even on the ditch light. Right there I gotta repair that. That just peeled off. I just noticed that. I apologize for that. I'll just uh, glue that back in place. Uh, but for the most part just the standard weathering on this guy. Um, and as we look at the roof you can see I did all the uh, grime work, all the fading, all the paint chipping effects along the roof. The fans, all the grill area there on the top all came out really good. I really like those effects there. Uh, but it's a really nicely uh, really nicely rendered, or really nicely done up AC He Probably one of the nicer looking ones I've uh, been able to do here. Uh, I don't get the opportunity to do many of these modern CSX locomotives, so when I got this one uh, in my uh, possession, I really tried to do my best to, you know, make it look good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, so... There's the 4850. That'll be going back here this week. I'll try to ship that back out to him. Uh, but that came out pretty good. And uh, I think I showed this one before, but I actually got this back to do some more work on it because uh, I missed a few things. Uh, but this is just another quick overview on the uh, 28 or the 2180, the CSX unit. Uh, the early Jeep 38 2, the SCL LNN family lines unit uh, that I've been working on for. Quite a, quite a while now, uh, but it's uh, pretty much done and ready to go back now at this point. I just had to finish up some detailing. Also, some things got messed up that I had to fix. Uh, I won't go into that, but uh, just some detail changes. Uh, but for the most part, it's uh, pretty much accurate now and ready to go. Uh, and like I said, this will be going back to the same guy who sent me all these locomotives that I'll have to work on next. Uh, but these will all be coming up in another video. I haven't uh, done too much to these other than some uh, basic detailing so far. Uh, but they all still need to be weathered and customized. Yeah, but these are the locomotives to start this video off. Uh, you guys can check these out. Let me know what you think of them. Um, I got a bunch more locomotives I got to show in another video that I want to go into detail with. I won't show now. Uh, but there's some nice custom locomotives that I'll be showing for myself and of course uh, the ones I've been doing for customers, so you guys can stay tuned for that. But here's a quick look at these guys here. Pretty happy with them.